Hey Magic the Gathering players and collectors, it's that time again. We're going to go ahead and crack some uh, pre-release packs here. Um, so we got a lot to talk about in this video. Um, I'm sure you've heard the news by now that uh, <laughs> Hasbro and Wizards has now made the big news. They, um, they are now gone mainstream for being, for tanking the company apparently. <laughs> Wizards as a, and Hasbro together have decided to sink the ship. There's like the Titanic. It hit an iceberg. And they're all denying that they hit the iceberg. And they're just like... And there's people playing um, music on the deck of the ship while the ship is sinking. And, you know, and they're like, oh, okay, I don't know what's going on. Why are we having this problem? Well, we're going to chat a little bit about, about Wizards, I guess. And... Uh, the um, fail army that's going on over there at Hasbro. And we're going to crack some packs, old school style. So I got two of these Brothers War pre-release -re pre kits. Um, this is how we used to do it, old school. Pop open a pre-release kit. Uh, play in a pre-release. Um, and go from there. Um, so we're going to take a look and see what's in here. I'm just going to pull them all out at once and just hit them like that. Get, some, get me some dice, all kinds of fun stuff there. Um, yeah, so <laughs> wow, wizard, wow. Hey, I got a, I got a mythic rare. I don't know if it's any good. What is it? We got uh, whenever a land enters a battlefield, it create a tapped power stone token. Oh, hey, I just you know what's kind of funny? I was just working on my um, my Omnath deck. Uh, yeah, I was just working on this guy. So. Ironically enough, I literally just had this one out. I was working on it, so maybe this great worm here can uh, go in there. I don't know. It can cost six. It's a bit high, but there's a lot of ramp in the deck, so yeah, maybe. Could be a thing. Um, all right, so let's drop those there. We got some draft boosters. What do we got? We got a dice. I guess I got the little one. That's lame. I got the big one. I don't know. I guess you only get that in the, in what is it, the um, bundle? All right, so we're going to go to the next thing here. We're going to go ahead and hit the uh, Brothers Wars. would be the Mishra's Burnished Banner Box. Um, sorry about the cat. It's my roommate's cat. They're just, just going crazy. He does that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and see what we got in here. Yeah, so it's, I, yeah, I mean, think about it. Between Wizards, they just, nobody can keep up with the product. They're producing too much stuff. People can't afford to purchase all that stuff. And... You know, and then the Wizards 30th Anniversary $1,000 four booster packs. What the? Are they both like that? Okay, yeah. Uh, so we got a rare. Region control, have vigilance and tap. Surveillance one. Okay, whatever. So, yeah. So I guess what I was getting at is that, uh, yeah, with all the crazy product releases that they're doing, and the products aren't even... And then just raising prices and raising prices and raising prices. And then, then they canceled, they canceled the judge program. So there's really no, no incentive for anybody to judge magic. There's no incentive for in-store play anymore. It's, oh, it's getting bad, guys. I mean, you would think that um, Wizards would figure it out and realize that they need to treat their players a lot better than they've been. But uh, I think it's just Hasbro cracking the whip because for some reason people aren't just buying as many toys anymore and it's not like you can go to a Toys R Us anymore. Like that shut down. It's just a weird time, guys, you know, from growing up where you just go to Toys R Us and pick up toys, you know, and they had Hasbro, Mattel, all those there. And now you go online and you get it from Amazon.com. Um, Mr. Bezos and his uh, rocket, <laughs> rocket to the moon. Um, let's see here. Visions of Phyrexia. We got one of these old cards. Not a very good one. I wouldn't say Pristine Talisman's any good. Um, is this an arena code? They don't even give you the arena code? Seriously? Well, that's lame. They don't even give you an arena code in these anymore, do they? They totally just cheesed out on the arena code, so I would just totally give that to you guys. Is there an arena? There's no arena code? No? Really? Okay. I'll totally give you guys a free code for, you know, arena players and all that stuff. Uh, let's see what we got here. And, okay. Commons. Let's see. Hope we get something good in here. And this is just, these are just draft boosters, but you never know. Maybe something, something okay. Bayla. 
yeah, Wizards just needs to cut back and just focus on the fundamentals and what they've been doing. And instead of having a commander deck for every single set, just make, I don't know, just make one commander set per year like they were doing and then just put good cards in it that people want to have in their commander decks. I mean, that's not hard to figure out, right? Self-assembler enters a battlefield. You may search your library for an assembly worker creature. Card. Eh, whatever. Um, these... The card isn't even centered perfectly. Yeah, there's issues. I mean, I, I don't know, you know, but Mark Rosewater always said that, oh, we're never going to reprint the reserve list. Well, they did reprint it. They reprinted. We're never going to reprint Collector's Edition. They reprinted Collector's Edition, you know, and serialized cars and all this stupidity. Just, you know, stuff like this happened to comic books, I want to say, in the 90s. If you remember back to the 90s or the people that were around those days, when you go, like, a lot of card shops are also comic shops, and they still are. In many ways, those places still are that. Um, and when you would go, there would be comics, and the comics started getting like, chromium color covers and foil covers and weird, like, white covers or hand-drawn covers or, like, gold, like, gold leaf on the cover and holograms. I just remember in the 90s, it was like some kind of a... Um, arms race to make the most crazy comic book that they could make, you know. So we did get a, we got a foil old school frame card. I think this is what they call the, um, what do they call them? The, uh, the, oh gosh, what was it? The blueprint card or something? But look at this. Even this car, brand new, pack fresh, right? There's creases in it. Like, wizards, re really? I mean, it's not even, I can't even call this a Nearman card. Because it's got some of that wear on the actual foiling, and it's also got a crease, which is, seriously, and, like, damage. You know, the car's, like, already damaged out of the pack. How does this happen that a car coming straight out of a pack is damaged like that? I mean, come on. It's never even been touched by anybody. I mean, whatever, right? Hopefully get something better than a precursor golem. Hopefully there's something good in here. Guys, what do you think about this Brothers War set? I, I mean, I understand, I like the Brothers War storyline. I um, remember that from way back in the day. That was from like... Ah, oh, here we go. We got an Urza. Prince of Krug. I don't know if this is the good one. I don't think it is. Uh, artifact creatures you control get plus two, plus two. You can pay six to get a token as a copy of target artifact you control, except it's a 1-1 one, one, soldier creature token in addition to its other types, but it costs six, so no, I don't think, that, you know, too much elsewhere flags, what? Elsewhere flag enters the battlefield, draw cards, sacrifice it, choose a basic land type, each land you control becomes that type until end of turn. Weird. And then we got a power stone token for those cards to do that. So... You know, Brothers was a neat story. Uh, if you know anything about it, it was the, you know you know about Mishra and it was you know where they were brothers, obviously, of course, and they kind of separated and did their own thing. But then they kind of had a rivalry from from childhood, and then uh, what was it? Um, Urza kind of teamed up with Tonus for a while, and then what was it? Um, I'm gonna say that. Uh, Let's see, Mishra, he, uh, what was it, Ashnod, he, 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 um, got hooked up with Ashnod for a while and was, was doing stuff with her, I believe it's her, if I remember correctly, hopefully I remember that, so we got Gix's Command, you choose two, you put a plus one, put two plus one plus one counters and up to one creature, it gains lifelink until end of turn, so each creature with power two or less, return, up to two creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. That could be useful, I suppose. Each opponent sacrifices a creature with the highest power among creatures they control. Yeah, picking these two on the bottom there is pretty, pretty good. But, you know, five, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Keening Stone. Pay five. It comes costs six to get out. You pay five. Target player mills X cards or X is the number of cards in that player's graveyard. You gotta have a ramp to be running that. I mean, that's 11 mana just to get it to that. I mean, by the time you're spending 11 mana on all that, and you're pro you should be trying to win the game. I don't know. I don't know many mill decks that wouldn't ruin that without, like, you know, like, I don't know, 
rhinestone or something or something better. Let's see. Got anything good? Nope, nope, nope. Mishra's Excavation Prodigy. They just printed this card. Why would you print it again? See, it's stuff like this. I mean, they just grind this thing into the dirt. They just printed this in Double Masters, and they had a better version of it, too, in there. Drafna, founder of Latinum. Return target artifact to control to its owner's hand. Copy target artifact spell you control. Okay, hey, we got a bobble. That's good. Misha's bobble. I won't complain about that. Uh, looks like we got a millstone. Ooh, okay, play two to target player, mills two cards. I think that's where the original term for mill came from, was you would use this card to mill people, so... Kind of neat to see it. Um, you know, but again, of course, the old cards just kind of devalue the old ones because we're reprinting all this stuff. So if it's not reserve list, which even then that's now in question, you know, they really can't know for certain if they're going to just try to reprint the reserve list. You never know. Uh, let's see. Oh, here's our rare Fauna Shaman. Okay, that's definitely a reprint. I do remember Fauna Shaman. Pay one to discard a creature card, search your library for a creature card, reveal it, and put it in your hand, then shuffle. Okay. Not bad, I guess. Whatever. Liquid metal coating. Target became, permanent becomes an artifact in addition to its other... Yeah. I remember this card. Old. Old school. A random mountain. Give me a mountain in a pack? Really? Seriously? In, the, in like the rear slot or something? That's stupid. That's cheesy. It's a nice mountain. Don't get me wrong, but... Eh, okay, whatever. Let's see what else we got here. Okay. But yeah, Wizards has now made it to the front page of all the financial like websites and stock market stuff as far as like Hasbro just tanking the company, just taking it and plowing it into the ground. Uh, got another pristine talisman. Don't really care. We're just going to sit there. Is this a... a Oh, hey, a proxy. <laughs> this proxy. <laughs> I can just make Black Lotus and just play it as a Black Lotus. <laughs> Whatever I want. Repair and recharge. Return to artifact enchantment or planeswork card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Create a tapped power stone token as a sorcery with white. Yeah, okay, whatever. whatever. Nothing too impressive there. I don't know, guys. Am I stoked about this set? Not particularly. It's okay. There's a few good cards in it, but nothing that makes me go, ooh, ah, oh, gotta have it. You know, nothing great. Nothing too crazy. Let's see. We got a, a dragon. Tyrant of Cur Ridges. For six, he's flying. When he enters the battlefield, he deals four damage to any target. Okay. I guess was... Okay, whatever. He's not that great, but whatever. Soul Guide Lantern. There's a battlefield. Exile target card from Graveyard. Eh, okay. Is this an arena code? No, I guess not. It's a swamp. Hmm. Well, only three more packs to go in these two. I have two more. We'll, we'll go ahead and hit them up. You know, it's 24 packs. I think it's equivalent to almost like a... What is it? Not quite a booster box, but we're getting there. I got these for a pretty good price, so it's worth checking through them to see if there's any cards I might be able to drop in a few decks and see what I can do with them. Um, actually, let's put those over there. Just basically bulk. Tatiana's command. It's kind of like primal, you know, those other command cards. You gain one life for each card exiled that way. After you exile someone's graveyard, that could be good if you have this person that's doing a lot of graveyard recursion. Search your library for up to two land cards. Put them in the battlefield. Tap, then shuffle. Create two bear creatures. <laughs> the bear deck, I guess. The bear force one deck gets a card. Um, put two plus one plus one counters on each creature control. Eh. It's all right, I guess. Nothing crazy, but okay. Self assembler. When a self assembler enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an assembly worker creature card, reveal it, put it into your hand. Cool. All right. I think I want to get a moss amber. You know, that's really nice to pull a moss amber. So aren't they going for like what 50, 60 bucks these days? Always pay for the bot, pay for the cards that I bought. Like most of these cards are just dirt. They're not worth hardly anything in these days, but. Eh, you know, it's good to go ahead and show you guys what kind of... Oh, I've got another one? Like, really? Do I really need two of these? guess not. Jalen Tome, did they have to reprint it? Probably not. And then a random foil. And Okay. 
Uh, Legions to Ashes. Exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls and all tokens that player controls with the same name as that permanent. Target non-land permanent. Well, that actually could be kind of good. It does really kind of hose tribal decks for sure or token generation decks. Definitely a hoser card. Kind of annoying. All right, let's see. We got uh, this is the last pack from this pair. Um, I don't know that there's a difference between the two boxes. I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something here that they've. Oh, well, best card in the set ever, guys. Oh, my wilds. Lastly, go get a land. Comes in a play tapped. Another one of these? Titanic. Another one of these, which I already got. And Sahili's token. Okay, whatever. Um, is any of this stuff any good? I don't know. Really? What? Why? Coding, millstone, okay, maybe. Bobble. This is probably the best thing in here is the bobble. Stone, flask, precursor golem. Create two, three, whenever a player casts an instant first spell, the target only has Copies of. Oh, yeah, this card is terrible. I remember these from back in the day. These are old school. And they go like back to like Wither Light, and those old sets from. Dinosaur times ago, guys, the 90s. Those are like as old as the 90s, if I remember correctly. A lot of that stuff going on back in the day. But, uh, yeah, you know, Wizards kind of had it coming to them at this point. They've lost, what, like 50% of their market cap in the last year or maybe the last eight months. Just because players are fed up. You know, they started saying stuff like, oh, well, people are price conscious. Well, you raised your prices like multiple times over and over and over again just keep raising prices of course people are going to be price sensitive they're just going to stop buying i mean it's that simple it's not hard to figure out if you can't afford it people aren't going to buy it i mean they have multiple product lines now you know you've got like collector edition set boosters draft boosters like all these different boosters and different things they're doing you're thinking to yourself well you, you can't afford to purchase all that stuff you know I, I just, especially now, the economy is a little bit not that good, you know? And prices for things, and inflation is expensive, but it doesn't cost much more to make this paper. It's just paper, guys. You print on it, and I can't imagine that their costs have doubled in, in price to make this stuff. And even if it did, the profit margins are so massive when you're basically printing money when you make magic cards. You're selling paper. Oh, I dropped the ding dice. I'll, let me go get that one. But yeah, you're basically just selling paper, so <laughs> you're printing money when you make when they make magic cards, that's for sure. Well, is there anything good about the spider? Let's see. He's got reach when the spider enters the battlefield. You target opponent, each create a tapped power stone token. You pay seven to look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal an artifact card from among them, put it in your hand, put the rest in the bottom of your library. Oh, that's card's crappy. Okay. I'm not going to put this in my deck. I mean, look at this. I mean, you're paying 10 mana to do that. I'd rather cast like an Eldrazi for 10 mana. For, in colorless for 10 mana, I'd rather be casting an Eldrazi. Mm, come on, no. Forget that. It's silly. Not a good card, guys. There's reasons. Uh, let's see. I guess you're playing Artifact Affinity. Maybe, maybe. It's big, maybe. Hercule. I remember Hercules Recall. It was a great card. Really good art on that card, too. Your end step, if you're cast a non-creature spell this turn, reveal the top five cards of your library for each card type among non-creature spells. You've cast this turn. You may put a card of that type from among the revealed cards into your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of your library and you random more. I can see this getting manipulated for shenanigans. This is like a shenanigans card that people would really kind of... Ooh, there we go. There's a good one. Got a hit on that. Mesmeric Orb. Uh, whenever a permanent becomes untapped, that permanent's controller mills a card. I've, I've actually played against this card before. Um, not fun. And we're fall. Okay. So we got a hit on that one. That's a pretty good one. That one's what, maybe worth 10 bucks. Maybe. On a good day. Who knows. Nowadays, these cards, I, I don't know, guys. I... I think the best strategy with Magic right now going forward would be to acquire certain older cards, get them graded to verify their authenticity, considering there's so many proxies out there that can be made, and you don't want to, you know, have anyone say that you don't have a real one. 
So I get it authenticated and graded, and uh, you're going to be a lot better achieved. So we got a mythic. Creatures I control get plus one, plus one, so what? Pay six mana to exile target non-land permanent you don't control until the trenches leaves the battlefield. Activate only as a... This is high cost. I... Is that mythic? It's a... Okay, well, maybe. I don't know. Got a lot of mana generation. Okay. Oh, yeah, this card. This spike. It's a couple dollar rare, but hey, it's, I've used it on a, on a couple commander decks. It's really nasty because um, it gives your creature death touch. Whenever an equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, that player loses half their life rounded up. It's a brutal card if you can get it and attach it to one of your creatures. It really does monster damage on people. Uh, let's hit another pack here. But yeah, yeah, I kind of saw this whole thing that losing common. I mean, there's just there's just no way. I mean, there's been a ridiculous amount of like they have a commander set for every single set. I mean, back in the day, I think in a way it could be argued that yeah, they did that before with Planeswalker decks, <laughs> Battlefield Forge, okay, and another Millstone. Uh, they did that with Planeswalker decks, and they had um, what was it? They had a lot of supplemental products. I remember like from the well, they did for from the vaults, which were their collector deal. Um, they also had, what was it? I'm trying to think. It was like those specialty decks, like Graveborn versus something. I think there was Demons versus Angels and Slivers. I think there was the Sliver deck and Premium Deck Slivers. I remember that. I actually bought the Premium Deck Slivers and it was a pretty, pretty good deck. I actually still have a lot of those cards and, uh, they're sitting in some decks right now. <laughs> Forest, okay. Whatever, I was flipping the land right here, I guess. And crap and a proxy. Like they're literally telling you, uh, if you can't afford the card, just make a proxy. <laughs> Seriously. It's hilarious. Just sometimes I wonder wizards really. You know? Back when they first came out with collector editions, what was it? Um one of the guys was asked the question, you know, something about the price and why is it so expensive? And then he replied with this product is not for you. And you're like, Are are you serious? It's not for, for me if you can't afford it. <laughs> That's just wrong. That's a horrible thing to say. Death Judge. Whenever Ashton Flesh Mechanist attacks, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do, create a, pap a tapped Power Stone token. Exile a creature card from your graveyard. Create a 3 3 colorless zombie artifact creature token for 5. Getting the 1 out, so it's a 1 1 though. I don't know. <laughs> Should we get a Flesh Golem? Alright then. We're playing Dungeons and Dragons, and there's a guy right now who's trying to learn how to make flesh columns in the game. And uh, we're getting there. It's going to be a while, but eventually he'll uh, he'll get it. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay. Death Bloom Ritualist. <laughs> this card was a common back in the day, if I remember correctly. We used to get it all the time. This has always been a good card if you played mono mono green back in the day. We I used to play this in different stuff. It's cheap, it's easy to get out, and um good for mono green deck. Hopefully we pull something decent out of these packs. I, again, value wise, I don't know. I, I don't know if you're these kind of packs are gonna get much of any kind of value. That's and that's really kind of the stinker thing, is that the money that people invest in this game there may not be getting it back. I, I that's really what keeps people playing is that when they go to cash out, like they say, okay, I want to trade these cards for other cards, or I want to sell them and get out of magic for a while and maybe get back in later. They can't do that if the cards are just completely decimated because Wizards comes out with ten different versions. You know, and I think that was part of the ecosystem of magic was such that Players could just go to a card shop and either sell them to the shop or trade them with another player or maybe even sell them to another player. It just never really um, was an issue until recently when there's so many different versions. Hey, Chromatic Star's not bad. Good for stuff. Um, gosh, it's like almost like an Eldrazi, but it, I don't think it is. 5-3 um, Elemental Token. Interesting. Uh, so yeah, you know, guys, I, I, I don't know. I don't know where this game's going right now. It's just Wizards has to really rethink it's what they call soul searching about what they really want to do with this product. They keep inserting all these things that are non-magic related, non-magic world related, and 
like Transformers are in this set and like the collector box. And I'm thinking, hey, a Cage Sun, that's a good card. I've used it. Some stuff. Need to see in that frame, I guess. Um, and then the Stasis Coffin. Pay two to exile the coffin. You gain protection from everything until your next turn. Wait, is that like a T Pro almost? You gain protection from everything until next turn? That seems like it could be kind of good. Almost like a T Pro in a bit, in a way. What kind of pro did you and your permanence disappear? Protected from everything? Huh, that seems like it's pretty good. But yeah, I guess, you know, getting at it here is that uh, the game's ecosystem has just been eroded by Wizards. Um, Poor behavior, you know, lack of support for local game stores and putting all the product up on like, um, oh, we got Urza Lord Protector. So this is, I think, the one, is this the one I was looking for? Yeah, you flip them. That's right. Yep, you meld them. You got to get the other card though to meld them. Um, the artifact, incident, and sorcery spells you cast for one less to cast. That's always good. If you, if you both own and control Urza, Lord Protector, and the artifact name, the Might Stone and Weak Stone. Exile the Might Stone and Weak Stone. Exile them and mail them into Urza, Planeswalker. Well, we got the top of Urza, the meld card. And a door to nothingness. This card right here, um, this is a pretty good pack. I will submit, I will admit, these two probably are pretty good pulls in there. I wouldn't say that's too bad. I need the, the stone though to be able to make them. Uh, this card, Door to Nothingness, so I've actually gotten it off before. <laughs> There's ways to do it and just ramp yourself up to get that much mana or, you know, like have a um, a chromatic lantern out or what is it? There's another one that allows you to t tap for an extra mana for each land. Um, uh, um, Marari's Wake, I think, if I remember correctly. And you just have five different color lands or lands that can produce, you know, any color. And there you go. <laughs> just tap and gone. Buy it, blow a player away. It's happened. Done it. Blew somebody away and they're like, you did what? You keep just blew me away. What am I going to do? <laughs> it's a crazy way to die. If they, you you got to pay five, but then you got to pay the, the, the ten and that to do it. I've done it before, but it, it's not easy. Usually if a player finds a way to get rid of that, they're going to. And you usually don't play this that much in like, I don't know, too many modern decks, I guess. It's more of like a commander thing. Because it takes a while to get ten mana. Oh, cool! We got this was a this was a good box. Okay, so now we got some good stuff to. We got a lot, I guess. Okay, did you see what's back there? I did. All right, so let's take a look. What we got here? We got we got a planeswalker, Teferi, temporal pilgrim. Whenever you draw a card, put a loyalty counter on Teferi, temporal pilgrim. He's here to draw a card. You can neg to them to create a 2 2 blue spirit creature token with vigilance. And whenever you draw a card, put a plus one plus one counter on this creature. This is actually really good. Um, target opponent chooses a permanent they control and returns it to its owner's hand. They then shuffle each non land permanent they control into its owner's library. This is pretty good, uh, especially in decks where you card draw. And we got Sword of the Meek. Oh this, oh, this isn't the one I was thinking of. Okay, there was a, I was thinking of a different one. So that was one of the other swords. Quick creature gets plus one, plus two. You equip it for two whenever a one one creature enters the battlefield and control. You may return Sword of the Meek from your graveyard to the battlefield and then attach to that creature. Yeah, not the one I was thinking of. I thought it was a different sword, but it's okay, I guess. Especially if you're paying like a token generation, like a one one soldier deck or something. Make a lot of tokens. Last pack, guys. Let's hopefully there's something good in this. You never know. It could be a thinker, but it could be a good one. We never know. Let's see what we pull here. The last pack was alright. Got a planeswalker. Let's see. Blast zone. That's a reprint. They did that in what? Um oh gosh. I wanna say that was um War of the Spark. Didn't Blast Zone come in War of the Spark, if I remember correctly? Yeah, I think it was. Okay, well, got a few of these. Okay, so we got Blast Zones are rare, not bad, I guess. The Icker Wellspring. Whenever it there's a grave. Battlefield is put on the graveyard. Draw a card. 
I guess this is a good way to, if you want to shenanigan stuff and somehow get it back in and out of the graveyard or something and draw cards, like, I guess he's someone finesse that thing. Draw a card, then discard a card. Okay, well, whatever, loot, looting. All right, guys, that's the entire, this four pre-release kits. Um, was it worth it? That's a good question. For the price I paid for these, yeah, prob probably, I guess, maybe. In the dice, I mean, if I was to try to sell all the parts of the pre-release kit, the dice is usually worth like five bucks, you know, so you get five bucks for the dice. That's 20 bucks right there. I probably have $60 in cards here, and these promos are, eh, they're okay, I guess. I mean, got a legendary, I guess you could use as a commander if you wanted to. And that's warm. Yeah, it's good for landfall decks. I don't know, guys, this wasn't bad. It wasn't bad pulls from just uh, some... Uh, cheap little pre-release kits. This wasn't too bad. Um, I'll tell you what. I love Magic the Gathering. I've been playing this game since I was a, since I was very young. I've been playing this game, and honestly, you know, it's a great game. Just the company that runs it is just like, oh my god, they're just idiots right now. Just look at what's happened. The the firestorm. All the channels are just. Even that guy Rudy. I you know everybody. I, I watch this guy's channel because he's like one of the most he's just a the guy is so crazy rich and I know how he did it I know all the kind of tricks he played on the system and how to get in good for him you know he's a multi-millionaire now half of it's off his car business and like all the homes and stuff that he owns and things but the point I'm trying to make here is I think the guy rage quitted on a video I watched him literally rage quit about magic cards because nobody's buying or something and he's like oh i'm not gonna get any new new sets i'm just gonna sell my old stuff and be done with it and i'm thinking to myself well yeah i guess that's how that works you know just sooner or later gotta sell his heavy bags and all the stuff people are saying about him and i just say i was like <laughs> sooner or later but you know i'm still gonna play magic you know i'm not gonna stop playing I'm going to try to get the cards as cheaply as possible, and I'm going to try to make decks with them. I will sell the ones that I don't need, of course, and see where that goes. You know, like, I'll probably sell this Blasso. I don't need Blasso. <laughs> Keep that Teferi, I guess, maybe. But uh, anyway, guys, it's been great making these videos. Please uh, like and subscribe to my goofy, wacky channel of random things and magic card goddess kind of stuff. So... By all means, it's been great making these videos. I got a couple other ones in the in the queue here. A couple deck uh, deck build videos that I've been doing, been wanting to get up. But um, yeah, uh, if you like what I do, please uh, just you know drop me a comment and tell me what you think about what's going on with Wizards right now. I'd love to hear it. If you made it this far on the video, it means you like to hear what I have to say about this, and I would like to hear what you have to say about it. So. By all means, uh, just let me know what you think will happen in the future here. If things are going to get better, are we going to have, you know, less expensive magic product? You never know, right? So, um, please do that. And I love all your, your faces. You know, by all means, just um, be good out there. You know, times are tough for some people. Do what you can while you can. You know, if you can't afford magic, then just at least watch us open packs of magic. You know, we go to open it and maybe get hosts on a pack and you don't have to worry about it. So there you go. Stuff like that, right? All right. Good night, guys. I will see you very soon. Bye.